Legacy point number two, create a Christ-centered atmosphere in your home. If we're going to pass a legacy of faith to our children, then our homes must have a spiritual atmosphere uh, for growth. What does that look like? Well, in, in my home, it means that uh, we're all perfect. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no sin. I, Everybody does everything I, right. right. Nobody ever argues. It, the nice thing about having you in the room, you, you, you know me, Heather and Dan. And, uh, sometimes people get the wrong idea about people that have a profession, you know, like a, like a pastor or a family minister, that, that there's something about their homes that is so spiritual you know, that they don't even sweat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that everyone is always perfect and is always calm and that nothing could be farther from the truth. It's just as real as any other home. Yeah, maybe we'd use the word authentic. The, the Christian walk is an authentic walk. It's a real walk. And it recognizes one thing, and that is that we are all sinners. And uh, we see it from our own personal experience and God's Word just declares it as clear as He could. It says in, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then it says in just three chapters later in Romans 6, verse 23, uh, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So one thing that is absolutely true even though our modern culture doesn't really buy it, is that sin is a very real thing. And if we're going to be authentic people, we need to admit that to ourselves and especially to our family because they're going to know we're <laughs> sinners. You can't hide it from your family. And then we got to forgive each other. And uh, creating a spiritual atmosphere in your home, when you come to grips with the very fundamental truth that uh, if we all are sinners in the fact that our relationship is broken with God, the only way it's going to be repaired will be if God fixes it. So our position is one of humility that says, God, I need you. I, I need, I'm dependent on you and I need your help. So let's create an atmosphere in our home that says, I need God. I need his forgiveness. And I need what Jesus Christ has done for me. That's the way that relationship's put together. I'm almost ready to preach. Okay, <laughs> okay, I am. But, but let me read another verse. Okay. It says that God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, in my family, I think the one thing that um, gives us a sense of spiritual power is a marvel at how great God's love is for us. We talk about it because He takes us as we are and not only uh, forgives us because what Christ has done, but He gives us out of that forgiveness an opportunity for growth and change. And it's simply because of God's love is so real. Uh, so, e even when we didn't deserve it, so Roger, I think we, could, we might say Christ is for us and He wants to live in us. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 15, He died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves but for Him who died for them and was raised again. And then verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Christ wants to live in us. He wants us to be in Him. He's for us when He died on the cross for us, and He wants to live in us now. We want God's love to be real in our lives. And one of the ways it becomes real to our families also is when we talk about it. Sometimes it's hard to do. Uh, in our groups today, we're, it ought to be kind of a safe group for us to talk about our own personal experience with God's love. Let, let's practice it with each other, then it's going to be a lot easier to do it in a everyday way in our homes. So here's a question for you and your, and your small groups. Tell about a time when God's love was especially real for you. 
Now, examples of well, that. How about, uh, it could have been yesterday's uh, quiet time as you were reading in, your, in the scriptures. Or maybe it was a worship experience once where you just were overwhelmed with a sense of God's love and grace and tears just flowed. Or perhaps it was something less dramatic than that where sometimes someone was speaking to you and you realized uh, as they spoke of God's love, you realized that you really did trust God to be the, your loving God and someone that you can trust with everything in your life. And you stepped into faith at that yeah, time. Yeah, Could be a big event. It could be yesterday's devotion. Talk about a time when God's love felt real. We'll see you back here in a few minutes.